Tonight we have a full house and uh, people really dedicated to deep sound has come to entertain us really soon and really often. But tonight we make another dream come true because today with us we have Jam Blomquist. Since the first time I listened to one of your live sets, really I fell in love with your music. So thank you for coming tonight to us and entertain us uh, in the best way possible. So how are you? Oh, thank you for these nice words. Actually, yeah, I had this big problem in the beginning, but in the end, I think uh, I had so much fun playing, especially playing the new tracks from the new album. And it's always nice if you're just working on something for like two years or something, and then you play it for the first time, and then you see the people uh, just accept it like immediately, and like the new tracks gonna be big. So that was pretty nice to see tonight. It was the first time in South America here in uh, Argentina. Okay, now tell us. Electronic music and you, uh, how did you find it? <laughs> Actually, uh, that's a funny story because I was uh, I was playing in a punk rock band when I was 11 years old. I got my first band and we played Rolling Stones covers and then Bob Dylan and stuff. Bob Dylan is still one of my idols. Uh, when, when I moved to Berlin when I was 18 or 19 years old, I, um, I discovered electronic music immediately. That was exactly the time when it was possible to get your MacBook and your whole studio. I mean, in the 90s, you needed to pay like 40, 60,000 euros for a studio. And in like 2002, 2004, it was um, it was suddenly possible to get everything in your computer, and so I started to mix my own stuff with guitars in the beginning. But uh, yeah, the more the more I did, the more I left the guitars out, and I fell totally in love with electronic music. I mean, that's that's Berlin. You have no chance over there. Definitely, that's really true. Now, one thing that is really hard, other than music, is lyrics. So, in your case, where do these lyrics come from? Oh, that's a good point. Thank you for asking that question because I always wanted to talk about that because um, I'm not proud about my music. That's what I do. But um, the lyrics part is pretty hard to to get some ideas and inspiration and stuff. So um, I'm pretty proud of my lyrics. Uh, I really try to get as, as far as possible, as close as possible to my idols, like which are Bob Dylan and Kurt Cobain, maybe. And yeah, I think. I'm pretty close, it's not perfect, I can be better, but I, I'm pretty proud of the lyrics and yeah, I, I'm gonna write it together with my friend Ryan Matheson from um, California, uh, not California, from Vancouver, from Canada, and yeah, he, he's a study at Philosophics, Philosophics, do you call it like that, whatever, uh, <laughs> Philosophy, yeah, Philo oh, yeah, good point, and yeah, we, together we're a good team, though. I have the ideas and he, he has the knowledge, <laughs> I, I'm stupid, he's a smart, and uh, yeah, together we will just write everything, and I, I'm pretty happy that you asked these questions for the lyrics, because the lyrics are so important for me. Right, so the experience of a live set uh, then um, has some dangers, like uh, packing too much gear, so in your case, what is that essential gear that you pack, and, and that's it for the night? Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, especially today, uh, even especially in the smaller clubs, it's always um, difficult to um, to find space actually to put all your life gear. You know, it sounds stupid, but it's it's really a problem that when you play in smaller clubs, then uh, uh, you don't have space for everything. And so the question is, yeah, what should I get with me? Which I mean, I never take my synthesizers to South America or North America because that's not possible. But uh, when I play in Europe. I'm gonna play with my band and we take the whole studio like like some all the MOOCs and all the all the um well I don't get the name now what's what the other guy like uh the, the proper eights and six and stuff yeah whatever oh, that's uh, the technical stuff whatever um yeah but here in South America I just got my my equipment as much as it could fit in the in the case case which could fit in the airplane though we always have the airplane problem. It's like eight kilos in hand luggage and twenty kilos in. Uh, so yeah, you, I don't know it's it's difficult, but uh, yeah, mostly I made it somehow. <laughs> now, among all of the uh, places you have then played um, your set, I found one really special. That was the Burning Man. It was then a sunrise, and what was the vibe there? Because that festival has really something. Oh yeah, uh, I, that was maybe one of the best gigs of my. I mean, it was not not the most crowded or much, most successful gigs of my life, but I think it was all in all it was the best gig because uh, um, yeah, the vibe at Burning Man is special, anyways. Because yeah, we were in the desert and uh, all the people are like only interested in music and art, no other way around, and art and music, and uh, and you have this special vibe over there because it's it's not about commercial things and everybody all the other stages are like self-made there's no commercial 
stage or something on, and the musician to play there, everybody gives his best. And for me, it was like a super, I was so honored to get this sunrise spot at Robert Hart. Thank you, Benji, for the spot. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that, that was great. I think it was the best, best moment in my music career. Actually, in the end, I was a bit drunk. You can hear that on the live recording. I was, I was a bit embarrassing, but I mean, yeah, that's life. Come on. Uh, can happen next time at Burning Man. I, I promise you guys I'm going to play sober. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference. I love that recording. I really did. Okay, okay. <laughs> it was really magical. It was really different from what I felt then, uh, then for example, in Boiler Room. Because then it's a much more controlled situation yeah. uh, than just Burning Man. But tell us then, what's in the future for you? What are your future plans for this year? Um, you know, your dreams, goals? Oh, that's many. Um, actually, I just finished my album. It, uh, no, I, I finished it like two months ago. And it comes out, uh, the first iTunes preset is tomorrow, actually, on Friday. And it comes, the whole album comes out uh, on Friday. 25th of May, no not the whole album, just, it's, it's called Disconnected because I think we all are so fucking connected with everything like every, everybody has like a virtual life and a real life and everybody seems to be so connected but in the end are we really connected or not so I think maybe we are even more lonely than we think behind the screen sometimes we're so lonely but we don't even realize it so I called my album Disconnected and it was recorded in Iceland and California and Berlin of course New York also a bit in New York I made some lyrics and um, yeah so it comes in three parts and Disconnected part one comes uh, tomorrow on iTunes and in two weeks in general so I'm pretty excited about this year and I'm gonna gonna play Burning Man again I think and yeah lots of festivals in Europe I'm actually unfortunately I'm gonna gonna go back to Europe now and focus on the summer festival season over there so you guys should come over there man <laughs> Any plans to play uh, then in Ibiza? Um, I have, what should I say now? Maybe I'm not allowed to answer this question, but yeah. Uh. <laughs> okay, but I'm hitting the spot. I'm on the right spot. So uh, it, it's a place everybody wants to be. There is a lot of competition and then small spaces. I mean, for thousands of people, but the booth is always small. Now, um, have you done any other collaborations other than, than in your lyrics? <laughs> Um, and actually, the lyrics uh, I'm pretty. I cannot work with somebody else except Ryan Matheson. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really like a nerd. Like, if somebody wants to try music lyrics with me, I'm like, oh no, it doesn't work. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, for the new album, I'm gonna work with Anjali from the USA. Um, yeah, she has a great voice and she's working really, really great with me together in a kind of totally different way than I work. But it's pretty nice to see and it's a pretty nice experience for me and on the first EP of my new album I have a collaboration with um, Kid Zemius, you know um, uh, a really nice guy from Malaga but he lives in Berlin now and yeah, he, uh, actually he's one of the most funniest guys I've ever met <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, hope, I hope you like the track oh, uh, maybe I forgot to send him to find a resort or whatever for, for, sorry, sorry Jose <laughs> All right, now, uh, a message to your thousands of fans and our audience, please. A <laughs> message? Okay, well, I don't know, what should I say? Um, <laughs> do, do, do I have thousands of fans? I mean, if yes, so uh, hello, guys. Um, I think the most important thing in your life is just not get too stressed about work or success or money or that shit, because in the end, we only have this one life. And it, when, you, when you die, you doesn't matter if you have lots of money or lots of success the only thing what you need is like good friends because happiness is only happiness if you share it with somebody that you love that's so cheesy right okay but that's, that's so true well but these are the words and wisdom from John Blomquist thank you so much for coming to our country so I never thought I could see you live really okay. <laughs> then uh, on a show so it's been a special night for me and for all of the fans that you have you have cried a lot of ladies <laughs> then that have been following you around here and then everybody's cheering so so you get the vibe really you have made a special then rainy day and rainy night on a thursday it's really special thank you so much thank you guys i mean a rainy day on thursday i'm used to that from berlin don't worry <laughs> thank you people and keep on listening to vitamina <laughs>